You put in the time to apply for the job online and weeks go by, months go by, you don't hear back, but the job posting is still online. What's going on? People have actually been calling the company, asking them, walking in the door, asking them, hey, are you guys hiring for this position? And they say, no, no, we're not. A survey of over a thousand hiring managers was given and 27% of them had jobs for over four months and said they had no plans on filling those positions. So why are companies keeping those job postings online despite never intending to fill them? One is to give the impression that the company is growing, that even though despite economic tough times, the company is being resilient and is continuing to grow. Another is to potentially deceive some of the employees that they currently have. Maybe they're overworked, they're carrying two, three loads, and management keeps saying, hey, help is on the way. We have the job posting up. We're planning on doing some interviews. Don't worry, just stick it out a little while longer. But the reinforcements never come. The help never comes. Or they could just be collecting them, just stacking up those resumes, just in case a unicorn applicant comes in. Or in case someone quits, then they can replace them quickly. This is more common in those high turnover type jobs, in jobs where people don't stay more than six, seven, eight months. I know when I was at Burger King, people would only stay there a handful of months and they were gone. So they kept a stack of resumes on file. Now with the federal government, they do something of the sort when it comes to stacking resumes. It's called the 12 month roster position. So when you're looking for jobs and you see 12 month roster, that means they're collecting resumes the only difference there is that they're actually considering those candidates, those applicants, and they hire periodically throughout the year. So it's not like they're just collecting them, you know, for no reason. People have been referring to these jobs that have job postings with no intention of hiring. They're starting to call them ghost jobs, right? Jo jobs that never come into fruition. And like we talked about with the high turnover, you have your customer service representatives, your retail workers, your fast food workers. So for them, you're always going to see that job posting up there because they're always, for the most part, they're hiring. And with customer service representatives, I mean, you understand that, right? I mean, who can blame them talking for hours to unhappy, unpleasant individuals trying to get a refund, trying to figure out where their order is or whatever the case. And with retail, depending on where you live, this might be the only show in town. You have a lot of smaller towns where the, the, center, the center attraction is the super Walmart or the super grocery store. And that's pretty much it. Outside of that, you have a few gas stations sprinkled in there and a couple of restaurants. Then we have companies that they plan on hiring, but it's not for another six to eight months. So what they do is they put the job posting out there to gauge interest. Are people interested? Will people be applying? Do people want to work in my company? But then again, like we mentioned, they're not hiring anytime soon. It's more on a longer horizon. And then we have the graduation season. And that's pretty much from May to July, where people are getting their degrees, they're getting out of high school, and as these fresh young individuals leave the university, leave their schools, many employers feel there could be some talent in there and they want to try to attract it. But if the right people do not apply, they'll just leave the job posting up. So what's the result of these ghost jobs? We have people that have applied 500 or even up to a thousand times or even more than that. And they don't even get an interview a lot of the times, or if they do get an interview, they never hear back. They definitely do not get the job, so they end up getting stressed out. These are people with experience, with degrees, with certifications, and they're left wondering what is going on. There was this one lady recently that part of her interview process, she had to film herself answering certain questions for the interview. So what she did, she made sure she had appropriate professional clothes on, put her lipstick on, you know, made sure everything was looking right, hit record and answer those questions about 20 25 minutes then she uploaded it on the computer never heard back from the job again it was an insurance company never heard anything then several months go by she hears something we're sorry we're no longer hiring for this position so what happened she just lost a bunch of times so what happened so how can you detect if what you're about to apply to is a ghost job 
First off, if the job description is too generic, that could be a giveaway. So if it looks like a copy and paste, it's not specific about anything, that could be, that shows low effort, low energy, and they could just be trying to gauge interest. Also, you wanna check when that position opened. Has that position been open for 60, 90 days? If it's been open for that long, the company probably doesn't have any intentions of filling it. Now, the website Indeed, which is a popular job post site, they have shown an 11% decline in new job postings. And this is kind of signaling a downturn when it comes to employment. So the jobs are not gonna be as plentiful as they have been in the past. Another thing to consider when you're looking at job postings on Indeed or LinkedIn, it actually costs that company money to have that job posting out there. So instead of going to LinkedIn or Indeed, try going to the actual company's website. Go directly to that website, look at career opportunities. That's gonna be a more accurate list of jobs that you can apply for. Now, if you don't wanna mess around with these ghost jobs, what I would suggest to you is to consider a federal government job. And if that interests you, there's eight steps in order to get a government job. And you can learn about that if you watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.